Hello, how wonderful were they, right? The uh, Sounds of Hope, Jungle Hadang. That was pretty good, huh? Kamsamnida. That's thank you in Korean. Good evening, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Espinosa. What a pleasure to be here today. Isn't it beautiful outside? Yeah, it's such a great night. And I know that some of you here in the Los Angeles area, you know who I am. But if you're from out of town, because it's a big party, uh, you may be wondering. So, little history. Um, born and raised here in Southern California. Whoop, whoop, right? Who's from Lawndale? Just throwing it out there. The South Bay, exactly. Uh, daughter of immigrant parents. My mom is from El Salvador. Hey, ya vieron. Hay centroamericanos en la casa, ya veo. Y el otro lado, mexicano. Oh, you mexicanos? I thought so. So, I'm so blessed because, um, I love the city, I was born and raised here, but it's given me so much love and given me uh, an amazing career. And I'm so proud because now I am the only Latina, the only woman on the weekday lineup at the number one talk radio station in the country, KFI, Thompson Espinosa. Thank you, thank you. So this is really special for me to be here tonight. We also have a show on PBS called Studio SoCal. I'm also a reporter at KTLA. I'm a commentator on CNN and I, You'll probably see me off the freeway selling fruits and vegetables too at some point. You know, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? I am so proud and honored to welcome all of you here tonight for this special and historic occasion. The inauguration of the first Latino American leader of the California State Senate in 130 years. significant. But tonight is not just significant for the Latino community. It is important for all Californians, which is why we have the Korean music here tonight. And I believe for all Americans, because Senator De Leon represents a truly American story. Think about it. The son of a single immigrant mother who lifted herself up from poverty became the first in his family to graduate from high school and then college, and now is poised to lead the Senate of the most populous, prosperous, and beautiful state in the Union, California. Good to see you. This is a great mayor, by the way, Eric Garcetti, for being here tonight, because he took a selfie with me. This is a great team, a team sin limites. And we say sin limites because actually Kevin De Leon was a guest on my CNN Español talk show at one point, and his Spanish is very good, by the way. You should know this. We have a wonderful program for you tonight, so get ready. But before we continue, let's have another round of applause for our wonderful performers from the Korean Cultural Center who are here in recognition of Senator De Leon's long and important relationship with the Korean community in Los Angeles. Let's also take a moment to recognize our sign language ASL right? interpreter tonight, Fern Gilbreth with RISE Interpreting. Thank you. I wish I was as good as you. You know, my brother is special needs. I'm a huge special needs advocate and I try to sign, so I'm, I'm working on it, but I know my signs. And now that I'm standing here, I have to admit something to you. Um, when I come here and have the pleasure and the privilege of seeing Gustavo Dudamel in action, right, with the Philharmonic, I now know why he never really says anything back to me. Because I usually sit over there and I put up a sign with like my Twitter address and I realize that, yeah, I can't read it from here. <laughs> it's a little hard to see up there, right? I now have the distinct pleasure, my friends, of introducing Senator De Leon's distinguished colleagues who honor him with their presence here tonight. In the interest of time, as you can imagine, please hold your applause, okay? Just after I finish with all the introductions. Chief Justice of the California Supreme Court, Tani, Tani Kantil Sakayue, Attorney General Kamala Harris, Insurance Commissioner Dave Jones, Superintendent of Public Education Instruction, Tom Torlaxon, Former Governor Greg Davis, Former Senate Pro Tem Senator Daryl Steinberg, former Senate pro tem Don Parada, former Senate pro tem state treasurer Bill Lockyer, 
former Senate Pro Tem David Roberti, Assembly Speaker Tony Atkins, and all other senators joining us here tonight. And last but not least, Senate President Pro Tem elect Kevin De Leon and his daughter Yuvia Carrasco. Un aplauso. Alrighty. Well, welcome, honored guests. Thank you so much for being here. At this time, I would like to welcome to the stage Father Richard Estrada, president of the board and founder of Jovenes Inc. You may know them, a nonprofit organization that is just wonderful because they seek new opportunities and foster the stability of at risk youth in the East LA and Boyle Heights communities. Father Estrada. Let us pray. Eternal God of mercy and love, you are the source of every gift and talent. Tonight, we gather to swear in our brother Kevin De Leon as the president pro tem of the California State Senate. Grant us, O Lord, your blessing and confer upon Kevin the gifts of your spirit so that he may be nourished and strengthened. Bless him that he may remain humble in heart as he serves your people. Let us also pray for the governor of this state and all the legislators and elected officials who are entrusted to guard our political welfare. May Kevin be enabled by your powerful protection to discharge his duties with honesty and ability. We likewise commend to your unbound mercy all people of the United States, that we may be grateful for our freedom and follow your moral compass and not forget the poor, the downtrodden of our society. Let the fruits of this gathering show in your joy, love, and support for Kevin as he enters this new role of leadership in the life of our great state. We ask you, O oh Lord, in your name, amen. Thank you for that profound blessing, Father, and for the important work that you and your organization do on behalf of our great community. I also want to say hello to Antonio Villarregosa here in Gil Cedillo. Just saw you. It's a reunion. It's a reunion. And now for the presentation of the colors, please welcome the Los Angeles Police Department Student Cadet Color Guard, Aspire LA. Strives to provide a safe and progressive space for Asian Pacific Islander immigrant youth in the Los Angeles area. Please welcome members of this dynamic youth led organization who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance.
stand and join us all in the Pledge of Allegiance. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now please rise uh, for our national anthem, which will be performed, thank you so much, by a multicultural all-female ensemble infused with the true flavor of the Los Angeles ethnic melting pot. They're amazing. The Mariachi Divas. Mariachi divas are amazing. Please take a seat. Thank you. Thank you. Mariachi divas are so great. Did you know that they won two Grammys just last year? Hello, winning a Grammy is not fácil. Eso no es fácil para nada. Increíble. Eso. I was kidding. Uh, Chief Beck, just so you know, I'm helping uh, co-host a fundraiser for the cadet program, so it's okay that I did that. <laughs> Good to see you. 
All righty. Um, okay, you know, this is really a special night. And can you imagine sharing it with your family? Someone you love, like, you know, the, the gem in your heart. Well, this young lady you're about to meet is just that for our senator. Lluvia Carrasco is her name. Aha! Uh -huh. I think some of you know who she is. She's very beautiful. She's smart. Lluvia Carrasco is an education major at St. Mary's College in Moraga, California. Her dream is to become a school teacher and principal. And she is passionate, I wonder where she gets it from, passionate about social justice. Please, applaud, it's a party. I am daddy's girl, so Yuvia, I get it. I just want you to know, I'm totally daddy's girl. Please, please give a warm welcome to a gal who cares about climate change, cares about what's happening in the world right now. And that's big, because she's very young. She could just be on Twitter and Instagram all day long, right? So please give her a very warm welcome, Senator De Leon's lovely daughter and number one fan, Duvia Carrasco. father as Senator Kevin De Leon or KDL and I know him simply as my dad. Many of the things a child wants or needs from their parent are some of the same qualities people expect of their elected leaders. Will they take care of you, listen to you, stand up for you, protect you, put your interests before theirs? In all of these ways and more, my dad has succeeded. He is a great mentor, leader, teacher, and inspiration to me. I'd like to say he was born that way, but I know from his many stories that he was raised that way by his mother, mi abuela, Carmen. This video you're about to see is a story of the person who inspired my father to make something of himself, to work hard, and to realize the California dream. This is that story. I never met my grandmother, Carmen, before she passed away from cancer. It happened when I was only nine days old. But ever since I can remember, my dad told me about how she came to California, raised three kids as a single mom, and taught them to believe anything is possible in California. Grandma was right. Dad went all the way from the Barrios to San Diego to be the first in our family to graduate high school and college. He moved to Los Angeles and helped organize nearly 100,000 people to march against discrimination in Prop 187, became an educator and an advocate for classroom teachers, and worked at the National Education Association in Washington to protect public schools across the country. Then he was elected to the state legislature, and today he'll be sworn in as the first Latino to head the California State Senate in over a century. Grandma was right about California too. Anything is possible here, not just for my dad, but for everyone. And my father has dedicated his life to make sure that becomes true for even more Californians. My dad worked with legislators and Governor Brown to move California forward. Together, they passed the California Dream Act to give children of undocumented immigrants an opportunity for higher education and the government. Even before the massacre of Sandy Hook, they passed the strongest gun control measures ever. With the danger of global warming becoming clear every day, California adopted the toughest greenhouse reduction standards in the nation. And by passing Prop 39, voters closed a loophole that gave corporations a tax break for sending jobs out of state and invested $2.5 billion in clean energy jobs. But my father says there's still more to be done, like raising the minimum wage so no one who works a full-time job lives in poverty. Make billionaires and corporations pay their fair share so we can put more money into the classroom and rebuild crumbling bridges and roads. Make college affordable again to give every student a chance 
and for California to continue leading the way by protecting marriage equality for everyone. It's been 20 years since my grandmother has been gone. She's missed a lot of good and bad in our state. But Grandma's still right. Anything is possible in California because of people like her who work hard every day and leaders like my dad who never give up on making this a better place. Thank you, Grandma. Congratulations, Dad. My life is just beginning, but my future will be brighter because of you. What a beautiful tribute. And uh, Senator, I know that your mother is definitely taking, you know, looking at you and so proud of you and taking care of you from above, as you can imagine. And uh, in light of the uh, quality, did you hear the voice in that piece? I thought to myself, wait a second, Yupia, I think you may have a very strong future in broadcasting. <laughs> thought I'd throw that out there. At this time, I would like to ask the curator, who I met backstage, what a lovely woman, Kathy, from the State Library of California, to present the Bible, the Bible for use in tonight's swearing in to Yuvia Carrasco. <laughs> this rare Bible you see here is one of only two surviving copies of the Latin Vulgate Bible printed in Paris by Jean Petit in 1501. Si, je parle français aussi. Uh, it is from the collection of the State Library of California and was first used as an inaugural Bible, get this, in 1871 for Governor Newton Booth. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I am so proud to introduce to you the Honorable Tani Cantil Sakaue, Chief Justice of California, who will administer the oath of office to Senator Kevin De Leon. Un aplauso. Repeat after me. I state your name. I, Kevin De Leon. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the Constitution of the United States. To the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of ev evasion. And that I will well and faithfully. And that I'll well and faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Upon which I'm about to enter. Congratulations, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so very much. Thank you. Uh, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Si se puede.
Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Is a iso. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Uh, Madam Chief Justice, thank you very much for bestowing us uh, with this wonderful honor. Uh, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so very much, Madam Chief Justice of the California Supreme Court. And to my beautiful daughter, believe me when I say that you make a father very, very proud. I love you very much. <laughs> to the constitutional officers, as well as to the uh, former Senate pro tems, um, especially uh, Senate pro tem Daryl Steinberg, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. And to my colleagues, to my colleagues, both Democrats as well as Republicans, thank you very much for bestowing me with your honor here today. Thank you very much. <laughs> to the members of uh, the other uh, body, of the legislative uh, body, headed up by our esteemed wonderful speaker from San Diego, Speaker Tony Atkins, thank you very much. Yeah. And to my colleagues, it's the House of Origin, uh, where I initiated my political career, to the members of the Assembly who are present here today, both Democrats as well as Republicans, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much. What a beautiful venue. This is a grand public building, and the centerpiece of my district. Now, I chose this venue because it is close to the working families who live right by this amazing venue. And these are the individuals who put me in office. It's also a visual representation of the innovative spirit that is California. 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 We live in the most creative and innovative state on earth. People come from all over the world in search of real opportunity with hopes of achieving a better life. We are the eighth largest economy in the world. We sit, yes. We sit at the cutting edge of a global economy, economy facing both Asia and Latin America, making us uniquely positioned to capitalize upon our constant state of innovation. We attract more venture capital than anywhere in the world. We have enormous advantages to compete in this new world economy because, frankly, much of it was created right here. Despite these challenges, despite these advantages, despite these advantages, we face challenges that threaten a long-term security. As I prepare for the challenge, as well as opportunity of leading the Senate, I spent some time thinking about what makes California great and what holds us back. On a night like tonight, I'm also thinking of my mother. I was raised by a single mother with a third grade education. She immigrated to America, to California, to give my two sisters and me a better life. I grew up in Barrio Logan in San Diego, a community full there you go. A community full of hardworking people, and sadly, an industrial dumping ground with its more than its share of pollution, drugs, and violence. My mom took the number 34 bus every day to the homes on top of the hill, the homes with the ocean panoramic views, her days spent taking care of the elderly and cleaning homes till late at night. She worked her fingers to the bone to put a roof over our heads, to put food on the table, and put the clothes on our backs. 
Yes, I rose out of poverty, out of poverty thanks to a dedicated mother who labored on her hands and knees so I could have a better life and because of the teachers who believed in me and allowed me to get a college education. And sadly, sadly, millions of kids today living in poverty simply won't have the same opportunities I had. This disparity has led me to one very important conclusion. Isn't it time we shatter the great American myth about pulling oneself up by the bootstraps? It's a fantasy. It's simply not true, because we all need help. As a great scientist, Sir Isaac Newton said, if I've seen further, it's because I've stood on the shoulders of giants. Every single one of us, whether rich or poor, has relied on someone or is relying on someone else for our own success. And reliance, reliance is, not nothing, is nothing of shame. It is the American way. Washington, Lincoln, Jefferson, Chavez, King, Milk, Anthony, all American giants were great leaders that each attributed. <laughs> all giant Americans, great leaders that each attributed their success to people who helped them along the way be great. Yes, my friends, hard work is critical. It is fundamental. But no matter how hard some people work, because of their lack of access, they are rele relegated to live differently, to live with less. The crucial element of success is in community. It's how we interrelate and support one another. We're at our best when we put our nature towards the common good, towards elevating everyone, rather than dragging others down or stopping them from advancing, or worse yet, doing nothing to help. This isn't who we are at our core. At our core, we're Californians, and we improve things. Now, we are greater when we come together, because by leaving some behind, as we, much, we do much too often, we all lose. Now, let me emphasize, we all lose. Now, we're rebounding in California. We're picking ourselves off the mat, and we're dusting ourselves off. The Great Recession was the worst economic recession since 1929, and now, our economy is growing again. We need to maintain fiscal discipline and reduce and eliminate our wall of debt. But we must also invest in tomorrow. Austerity alone doesn't build a future. California's long-term economic success depends on the investments we make today. We must invest in our youth to secure our future in the state of California. To be truly great, to be truly great, we must target our investments to make certain more kids have a fair shot at their own California dream. In fact, every kid, regardless of who they are, regardless of where they come from, regardless of what language they speak or where their parents are from or where they were born or their immigration status, deserves a fair shot to make it here. Every kid, every kid deserves a safe community with green parks and open space where they can play and exercise without fear of violence. Every kid deserves to breathe in clean air and drink clean water, no matter where they live in California. Every kid deserves a quality education with safe schools, small classes, and excellent teachers, and the best chance to graduate and to go on to college or a career technical education. Every kid, every kid deserves a fair shot to attend a public university that's both accessible as well as affordable. <laughs> Expanding opportunities isn't just the right thing or the moral thing, 
It is the absolutely necessary thing. Now, let me say, smart budget decisions and helping kids are not mutually exclusive. Doing both is mandatory for inclusive economic prosperity. The California dream, as we all know it collectively, regardless of ideology, regardless of political parties, the California dream requires a highly skilled workforce and a healthy middle class. And to accomplish prosperity, we must broaden horizons to those who are currently shut out today. Now, my story should not be the exception. My story should be the rule. Now, some will say, and some will look at me and say, I'm here today because my mother worked hard, or because I studied hard, or because I made smart choices. Some others will say that opportunities are available to everyone at birth. If you work hard, if you play by the rules, the best thing the state can do is to get out of the way. Friends, I'm here today. I am not here today because people got out of my way. I'm here today because people got in my way and helped me along the way. And this doesn't mean that government is always the solution. We must develop strategies where government facilitates solutions rather than always trying to be the solution. But let's not pretend. Let's not pretend that every child can be successful if they pull hard enough on those bootstraps. The reality is many kids, many kids because of factors that are outside of their control, can pull and pull and pull and never rise up unless we as a society are willing to lift them up together. We're not stronger as a state when we get out of the way. On the contrary, we're stronger both fiscally as well as morally when we put the ladder of opportunity in the way and reach for all individuals. Now, instead of pretending we are successful simply because of what we did, we should honor those, honor those who helped us by doing for others what was done for us. I stand here because of you. I'm here because of the activists in the 60s and the 70s devoted to social justice and equal opportunity who gave me a chance to pursue a higher education. I'm here today because of the teachers who, beyond the odds, still believed in me. And I'm here today because of my constituents who honored me with their votes. And I'm here today because of my colleagues in the Senate, both Democrats and Republicans. And thank you very much to my colleagues. And as I hope you have seen tonight, I'm here today because of my mother and because of my daughter. They will forever inspire me to do the right thing for the next generation. Finally, I'm here tonight because of each and every one of you. We're all connected as one people. And in California, my friends, anything and everything is possible when we do it together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Keep applauding. I see some signs up there. Vamos. Es una fiesta. Es un caballero. Hay que saludar a todo el mundo. Eso. Eso. Thank you. 
No, no, please. I was about to say, that's the beauty, right? Is that you really are one community. And you, I, I like this because we have a mixture of constituents and you, elected officials. And I think this is so significant because it's representative, if you think about it, I was pondering here in my seat, that you represent everyone, right? You gotta look over here, you gotta look over there, you gotta look everywhere. And I look back here, and we got some young kids, and this is so inspiring, right guys? Yeah, that's, they're our future. Love it, wonderful. And you know, for some of the people that wondered and asked the question out there, you know, wow, the Disney Concert Hall for the inauguration, that's a big place. Well, it's Senator Kevin De Leon's quinceanera of sorts. <laughs> so again, it has really been my honor to serve as the MC for this historic inauguration. And I think I can speak uh, for everyone here. Thank you for standing, everyone here, and congratulating you on your new position, wishing you the very best, the very best luck as you continue on all of your great work on behalf of all of us Californians. Thank you for saying something that was so important and that it's not about people getting in your way, it's just we work together. And sometimes, you know, it's the obstacles that make us even better, aren't they? So, to everyone in attendance here tonight, thank you for making this your evening with us. Thank you for being such a terrific audience and for being, bearing witness to this very important event. Now you are all, by the way, cordially invited to join the President Pro Tem. We can say that now officially. Yeah. For complimentary, complimentary food. Did you see this, Senator, the three signs up there? Mira. Eso, congratulations, it says, yes. Uh, but first, before we leave and go have food and drinks and enjoy each other's company, we are gonna have back on stage mariachi divas to give us the send off. Que Dios me los cuide, God bless you. Mariachi divas.
right, you already saw us play our instruments. Do you guys want to see us dance? Anybody? Anybody want to see us dance? All right, we're going to have one of our girls come and dance over here. Come on over. All right, but we need your guys' help. We need you guys to put your hands together like this. Hey, hey. There you go. We need a little something. Adamonia, give me a beat. Thank you all. Good night. Buenas noches. Gracias. Gracias.